All right, Peter, I'm going to try something different. So I can still come in if you need me to, but I wanted to send you this just in case to see if this helps any, um, if this helps better. Because if I come in and show you how to do this and then you forget how to do it, you won't have a reference here. So I'm just going to record this for you and then hopefully you can reference back to this. All right, so first of all, first of all, let me just start and I'm going to go ahead and put in two fittings. And in this case, we're going to have um, basically the, uh, the quick connect air fittings and I'm just going to drop these in space someplace now the first one's going to be grounded the second one's not so it's free to move around but in the case that you may or may not be in you know both of these would be constrained to something so what I'm going to do is actually turn this one a little bit that way they're not in the same direction all right so step one is to make sure you have your fittings in step two is going to be to start a new part within the context of the assembly that's going to be your hose so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to right click out here in space and i'm going to say create a new component i'm going to pick a template and in your case you'll go to the um, aps templates and you'll just pick the one that says basic part and i'm going to put mine in here and i've already done one of these just to test this out so we are going to find, uh, I'm just going to name it hose test. I think that's what I had it before. Anyways, we'll just name this one hose underscore test underscore two in case there is one out there. Now here's the important part. You want to make sure this is checked and this is going to constrain the sketch plane to the selected face. And what you want to do is you want to pick, you want to pick the face of one of these fittings. So we're going to have that checked. This is on normal. Um, doesn't have to be. You could you could use uh, purchased or phantom here. It doesn't really matter. But for this case, I'm just going to leave it on normal. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to go down and I'm going to pick the face of this one that's grounded. I'm going to pick this face right here. What that's going to do is just establish some sort of a zero for me that's normal to that part. So in the case of the templates here, I'm just going to delete out the square and the hex. I'm going to edit the circle and I'm going to delete the circle. Now what I want to do is project the center. So, so far we're doing pretty good. Um, so we have that first sketch established. Now what we want to do is finish that sketch. All right, so now I want to create a 3D sketch. So I'm going to go ahead, right click, go down to 3D sketch. I'm going to go up to include geometry. So this is basically the project geometry uh, portion of a 3D sketch. And I want to go back to this part. I've already got that one projected, but what I need to project is this little step on the inside of this part where the hose would go down and terminate. It would push in this far. So I want to go ahead and project that. And then I want to project both of the um, surfaces on this other part. So. Again, I'm going to project this, uh, the top surface there, and then I'm going to make sure I get the step down in here of this part. All right, so with those four surfaces established, I want to go ahead and create a line that connects these two circles together, because that's going to represent the hose once it comes into the fitting. It's going to go tangent from the top down to that uh, stepped surface. create a straight line between those two. All right, so you're pretty much done at this point. Um, we just have the curve to put in. So now there's two ways to handle this. This really just depends on how you want to handle your curves. So we have a spline that's a control vertex and we have a spline that's an interpolation spline. One, uh, you may find one to be easier to use than, than the other. I'm going to show you how to do both. Um, and the reason I'm picking a spline is just because I can get two points in there and it'll be nice and easy to deal with. So let's do a control vertex spline first. So I'm going to click on that one and that's under the, uh, it's just a spline command here. So first thing I want to do is pick this first spot or a point and then I'm just going to click two more points. Now you may see that you have this deal that's dragging out here. You can just kind of ignore that. Just You really just want two points between the ends of the fittings. I'm going to click that last point there. So basically I clicked that point, I clicked out here in space, out in space, and then I terminated at that face. Now the only thing that's left to do here 
see how when I drag this out there, that's not how the hose is. The hose is not going to come in curved like this and then immediately go straight. So what we want to do is establish two uh, tangent constraints. So we're going to go down here to right click create constraint. You're going to go to tangent. You're going to pick your curve and you're going to pick this straight line. Okay, see how it went backwards like that? I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. And I'm going to make sure that my line, okay, so that's what it is. So in this view, it looks like it's going above it, but in this view, it's going below it. So I'm just going to drag this vertex up here to make sure that that line is coming out from the um, end of that fitting. There we go. It should work now. So I'm going to right click, create constraint, tangent constraint. I'm going to click the straight line, and then we're going to click the curve. So there we go. Now we got a nice tangent curve coming into that fitting. And the same thing here. We kind of want to get this curve going out the end of the fitting. Prepped. Should be able to do it here. All right, so right click again, create constraint, down to tangent, pick the straight line, then the curve. All right, so so far we've got these two fittings with a nice curve there. Now, of course, with this, you're not going to have any sort of control over the minimum bend radius in this. You're just going to have to make something that looks good. Um, so in this case, my only two control points are these. So I can drag these how I want them. And they're moving in a basically a single plane. They're, uh, the vectors are um, perpendicular to the space down there. If I want to right click on this thing, now I have 3D controls and I can choose to have a local constraint or orient or any of these, these things. So what I want to do here is I want to view a local and pick that dot. Uh, where is my local? Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to right click again. You got to right click on that point. 3D transform. So what I can do here is I should be able to I can rotate my handles and I can move in one direction or the other. So let's say I move the point out here a bit, you know what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move it this way and I'll move it up. And then I hit this check mark. Ah, I don't know why it didn't move. Alright, so this is the one I normally don't use, so I don't know why that's not moving. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this curve. I'm going to go with the standard curve, the one I recommend you use which is the second option, the interpolation. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click that point. And then I'm going to, remember, I'm just out here someplace. I'm going to click two points. And then I'm going to come back into the fitting and hit the check mark. Now I want to just rotate this around to make sure that I'm coming out. It looks like I am, so these constraints should go on fairly easy. So remember, I'm going to do a tangent, curve, straight line and curve oh, see it went backwards on that one so what I'm going to do here see how it's going down all I need to do is get this point dr drug up so I'm going to 3D um, move tool and I'm just going to drag this up just so this curve here is above this face that way it knows which direction it's supposed to come tangent to that line Click my check mark there. Now, when I click create tangent, I should be able to get that to snap this time. And perfect. Okay. So, again, we have another curve. Now I have full control over these points. So, I can go down to the, if I hover over the point and right click, I have the 3D transform tool. So, now I can move this point around in space here. I can rotate where my X and Y is. So if I wanted to drag it down, like we wanted it to come out of here with a kind of a sharp curve to go around another part or something, I could do that. So all I'm doing is just using these control handles here to kind of manipulate where these points are in space. 
So in this one, let's say I want to drag way over here. And then we want to go this direction. So let's say your hose is going to look something like this for some weird reason. You know what? Maybe on this one, we just kind of bring it in just a hair. There we go. Okay, so let's say that's the curvature of our hose. So we have full control over it. It's pretty easy to manipulate around. Let's say for some reason you need to get a third point in here. All you got to do is right click over the line and say insert point. And then click where you want the point. And we're going to put one right there. And now I'm going to move this point around. So let's do, let's go that way. And this way and maybe up a little bit. Okay, so all we did was add another point in. I got full control over this curve. And it's an actual curve. It's not just a like you would normally do where you have to create a plane and project and do all that stuff. This is an actual curve. All right, so let's just go ahead and finish this hose out. It's real easy. So I'm going to finish my 3D sketch. Now what I want to do is I want to I want to sketch on this face right here where the hose is going to terminate on one of the fittings. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say new sketch and it doesn't really matter which one you do. I'm just going to go to this one because there's less planes that I have to look at and deal with. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to hover over that face and I'm going to click new sketch. Now I, I'm going to go ahead and project this circle again and now the next piece of information I need to know is how thick the hose wall is. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch a new circle. I'm going to place it in here. Now let's just say that we know that the hose wall thickness is 0 0.0185. There, I've got my two circles and I have my sweep. So all we're doing is a sweep now. So you can do shift Control s for sweep, or you can right-click out here, create feature, and go to sweep. So there's your shift Control s So I'm going to pick that enclosed uh, circle and choose path and then pick this sweep and it's going to give you a preview of the hose go ahead and hit OK and there you go that's one hose created with your fittings now once the hose is created you still have access to it you can edit this hose so we're going to double click on that we're going to go back into the 3D sketch and let's say I want to take this point out I'm just going to delete that point finish the sketch and I still have the hose. So this is a really easy way to go ahead and create these hoses. It really beats doing it the old-fashioned way um, with various sketches and things like this. Now obviously if we take the time to set hoses up in the hose in the routed systems portion of this it even gets much easier than this and much easier to control but without going through that whole ordeal that's something we can do once I come back on but without having the time right now to set that up this is your best bet and it's very easy to control it after the fact so anyways that's how you do the hose like I said if you still need me to come in and show you this I will I just wanted to set this up for you and have you take a look at it first before I come in because I know you won't be there Friday and if I just come in and show it to you without having some sort of reference for you to go back to there's the chance you might just forget it and then you wouldn't have a reference later so Give this a shot first, Peter, and if you need, still need me to come in, I'll go ahead and come in. It's not a big deal. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks.